Hello, I'm Natasha Coyle, and this is another episode of The Rest is Rugby, the Glasgow Warriors series that looks at the off-field stories of our staff, players, and community. On today's episode, we're discussing men's mental health, so viewer discretion is advised. I'd like to welcome to the show Martin from Men Matter Scotland and Kyle Stain, Glasgow Warriors captain. Hi, thanks for having me on. Hello. So, Martin, let's start with you. You are part of Men Matter Scotland. Can you tell me a bit about the charity and why you got involved with the charity in the first place? Yeah, no problem. So, Men Matter Scotland is a men's suicide prevention charity based in Drumchapel in Glasgow. Our aim is to promote well-being and men's mental health to prevent suicide. So, we are a peer-to-peer support charity. We are there for guys. It's all guys who have been through things and want to give back, helping other guys out. So we have a hub in Drumchapel, which you came to see recently, where we're throughout there we're open from Monday to Friday from half past 10 until 9pm. And we're back opening Saturdays in October as well. So we'll be open from 10 to 4 on a, a Saturday. So we open, we are there for guys who are struggling with any sort of mental health issue, whether it be addiction, depression, anxiety, loneliness, or just need something new in their lives. We are here to help guys out. And why did you first get involved with the charity? Yeah, for myself, I was around this time six years ago. I had a really severe battle with depression. Uh, managed to get through that with help and support and I'd never really asked for any help or support before. And when I was going through that, I felt like the loneliest guy in the world. But when I got myself through it, I felt like I didn't want him to feel the way I did. So after that, I'd done some studying, done some courses and got myself into a place where I could give back and a job came up in Member of Scotland. I went for it and that's been me for the last two years now. Fantastic. And I really felt when I came into the hub, the immediate sense of community that is inspired in the hub in Drumchapel. And you don't just focus on conversations around mental health. Obviously, that is the prime reason why you're there. But you also inspire the men that come to come through those doors to focus on what they love. So sport, art, and you drive a lot of that passion through that. Can you talk to me more about how you use sport, music and art? with the people that come through those doors to help them co- overcome some of the things that they're going through. At Men Matter, as I said, we're open from half past 10 till 9 p.m. But what we do every day is we have different classes and activities on. So Monday to Thursday at al- around 11 a.m., 1 p.m. and 6 p.m., we'll always have a sort of mental health class or we'll have a yoga class, meditation, cold water dips for the guys to learn new coping mechanisms. We do things like talking groups where the guys can talk to other guys. And what we then do is on a Friday, we'll take the guys out and a go wild where we'll take them out into nature. We'll bring paddle boards, kayaks. We'll do a talking group. We'll build a fire, getting guys out, connecting with other guys and talking crucially, but also getting out into the open and getting away from the madness where they're living. We also have football tournaments that come up or we'll go and play football. We have we fishing where we go take the guys out on a Saturday. So we do different activities and that to get the guys out and about. And the main thing is connecting with people and getting guys away from that. I always think the first sign of people struggling is they isolate themselves. They pull away from the things they used to do. They stop talking to people and then they pull themselves away so much that they be think they become a burden. Our aims to stop that happening and get guys out connecting with people. And Kyle, you have to focus on connecting with um, the other players in the team. What kind of stuff do you do outside of rugby to connect with everyone else in the squad? Uh, well, everybody loves a coffee and a cake. Um, so that's always the first point of call for most of us. Um, you know, coffee, cake, um, maybe brunch. Um, March through September, um, we like to get out on the golf course. Again, like Martin says, just getting out, uh, you know, into nature, into the fresh air um, with your mates, a bit of company um, is always good. And um, yeah, have some fun whacking the ball around. Um, outside of that, I don't know, uh, otherwise play some cards, um, you know, especially when we're all together um, on away trips and things like that. Just um, anything, um, you know, quite casual that, that gets people together. And sport is obviously an outlet for so many people that come through your doors, Martin. But Kyle, you play sport, that's what you love, but it's also your job and you have the highs and the lows that come with being not just a player for Glasgow Warriors, but a captain. How do you deal with that? Not not pressure, but how do you deal with going through what you love, but sometimes the the highs and the lows of that? Um, yeah, I, I think um, the club are really good about making sure that you've got a support system in place. Um, 
and you know for me my support system is my family is my, is my wife is my daughter is, is my family back home um it's also the you know the, the teammates here um you know getting out like you say getting out with them being able to chat to them um but then the club's got um you know really good things in place too so we've got you know our psychologist um dr zara lipsy um you know and she's amazing sometimes it's brilliant just to have someone kind of a little bit removed from the situation that you can just open up to um you know and, and just use them as a sounding board sometimes more than anything um yeah so that's, that's probably what i do um and everybody i think you know is encouraged to sort of have their own process around that um raising awareness around the pressures that do pop up you know social media and um you know sometimes the backlash and that kind of thing um so i think the awareness is good um encouraging guys to speak about it is good and just encouraging boys to to have a process around it do you feel that the conversations and the willingness to talk about um being aware and the conversation around social media and being in i suppose the spotlight have increased over recent years oh yeah gone through the roof i think um especially the awareness around the social media stuff you know you'll, you'll probably find that there's a lot of guys that you know aren't on it or aren't on some of the platforms aren't on twitter um you know or stay away from things like that so um but yeah definitely and boys are a lot more willing to talk about it you know everyone will talk about it you know just in the in the team room around um over a coffee or, or over lunch or anything like that so um the awareness is definitely up but sort of the the willingness and the openness to to talk about it has definitely gone up loads too how do you so i'm always interested in the mindset so i'm a big football fan but i think it will be the same for you guys that like how do you react to a defeat because obviously you have the extra pressure on you how, how do you unwind or how do you get away from that after a defeat uh, again everybody's everybody's really different you know so like some guys some guys love to watch the game straight away um you know and, and kind of process it straight away look at like where things have gone wrong and, and try right the wrongs and um you know I'm, I'm the complete opposite to that um you know i find i get quite irritated if you know anyone comes to me you know straight after the game or on the bus or um you know before we've gotten home if you're trying to talk to me about it i get really i get really irritated i need to go home um you know kind of spend some time with my family get my head away from it and kind of just I don't know try to detach the emotion from it in a way um and then once I can do that then then I'll you know then I'll I'll watch the game you know find out where we went wrong and then it's just about you know we've got a process through the week during the game and we trust that process and so when we reflect we reflect on the on on that process and where that process has gone wrong not necessarily on the results and I think that kind of helps um yeah that kind of helps you know the next week because you're not you're not reacting to it results the whole time you know you've got a process that you trust and you work on and um you put faith in that so when i was i always look at my life in sort of two parts like pre-depression and post-depression so before i was always very negative on myself so as i say i love playing football but when i went to play football when it, i was fine at training or fine when i was playing five sides as soon as it went to a game and there was pressure on i would worry i was going to make a mistake so then my game was played with fear and I didn't enjoy playing then. So how do you, how do you go into it? And I've, since then, instead of being negative towards myself, I try and be positive towards myself yeah. and I found I enjoy playing more. How do you go into games? Do you go in with that positive mindset? What happens when you make a mistake? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, and again, I think a lot of players struggle with that. Um, everybody, you know, that, that plays at a high level struggles with that because, you know, you're only doing that because you... Um, because you care and because you you know you demand a high level of yourself and sometimes that just tips over the edge so um, again this is where the club have, um, you know have been great and having someone like Dr Lipsy um, available has been great because it first of all you know the first step is to have an awareness that, that you are like that um, and then off the back of that again it's just making getting a process to um, what we find in those moments is that you're either thinking about the past or you're thinking about you know when you've made that mistake before and you don't want to make it again or you're thinking about the future, you're thinking about, um, you know, what people are going to say if you make that mistake or how you're going to be judged if you make that mistake. And so either way, you know, it's something detracting you from the from the present. And so everybody's encouraged, um, you know, to have their own individual process on, on how you keep yourself in the present moment. Um, and then as a team, whenever we come together, we like to take a big deep breath in and, and deep breath out and what you get then is, you know, you've got 15 guys in the huddle all doing the same thing in and out together. Um, a breath definitely helps you sort of de de-escalate whatever emotion might be feeling you. Mm -hmm. um, just taking a moment to sort of let that let, let that flush out, but also doing it together mm -hmm. um, kind of brings you back into the, the present a little bit. We'll get you to have a job at Men Matter when you finish <laughs> your playing career. <laughs> Kyle, you obviously have to captain people on the highs and the lows and inject energy, but also keep the energy levels 
right so not getting too ahead of ourselves not in losing focus when even it's the final five minutes and not losing focus to get over that 80 minutes and win the game how do you temper that and mediate that as captain um well i suppose there's two bits of that through the week and then you know probably in the game um but i think that the biggest part about it is that you know it's not only me you know i've, I've got a leadership group um and obviously you know we've got franco and the coaches too and so one of the pressing things on a monday morning you know with the coaches and with our leadership group is to sort of gauge where you know you think the squad are at um emotionally and or mentally um you know after the game um because i think that's that's always the not, not but that's you know that's the thing you that's the most important after the game is that you know you you find guys bounce back physically all right but if it's been a really taxing game big game big count um mm -hmm. you know it's mentally draining and so um we'll then just adjust our our messaging accordingly you know so then maybe the front end of the week monday tuesday we'll make sure all our messages are are really sort of tactical and strategic and you know things that are a little bit lighter um you know to try and to try and digest um you know and just give uh give boys time to sort of bounce back from you know the the highs and lows of the, and the intensity of of playing the game um and then the back end of the week like you said we've got to get back up to you know to that level to be able to play again so then we'll just make sure that you know the emotional side of the messaging um you know drip feeds in at the back end of the week um hopefully so that you know we, we peak in for for saturday and then through the game um again it's just it's just having the the same process so you know like ha having the breath so it'll be the same person that that does the breath for us and um limiting the, the amount of guys that speak so we get a couple of quick messages you know focus points and then just mm -hmm. go from there mm -hmm. definitely sounds like observation and communication are two of the key things that both of you do in your roles both here at glasgow warriors and at men matter how important is observation in both of those contexts? Yes, it's, I think it's key because, as Kyle was saying, a lot of it is ob observing other people. It's also observing yourself and seeing how you feel, how you feel post-match and all that, like you're saying. It's just having that awareness. A lot of the stuff we try and teach in the hub is just that self-awareness. How are you feeling? Do you need to speak to somebody? Oh, you're not feeling great? Okay. Before, when you didn't feel great, what did you do to get yourself better? So it's, all right, I exercise or I go for a walk, right, can we do that again? It's just about making people aware because once you're aware, that's the point you can change it. If you're not aware of your thinking or why you feel the way you do, it becomes difficult. But once you become aware, that's the point where you can change it. And that's where the sort of accountability and responsibility comes in. It's that consciousness, yeah, isn't it? And being and being self-conscious. And I think once you, it's almost like a, a, a switch that flips as soon as the, it goes like that and you suddenly become aware and you have that self-awareness and responsibility to not only yourself, but people in your life that you care about, you then realise that what this is the meaning, this is why I'm doing it. And you then see, I think the world opens up. A question that I would like to ask you both kind of broadly speaking, uh, mental health, particularly relating with to men's mental health and in sport, has become an increasingly more talked about topic, particularly in the past five years. What are your thoughts on greater communication of men's mental health, both in sport and out of it? I think it's improved a lot. I still think there's a long way to go, but I still feel there is a certain stigma around it. And it's just about, opening up and we always say like crying's a sign of weakness showing your emotion isn't uh, sorry showing your emotion isn't a sign of weakness so we all as guys i think a lot of the time in west of scotland we're told to just keep things to ourselves or we think that's the way to go but it's not it's not how we get things solved and once you start talking and opening up that's when things start to become more clear and we don't let things go around in our head and get lost in the situation so if we can communicate more still think there's a, a long way to go but i think the the strides we've made in the last five to ten years have been good but i still think there's improvement to be made yeah no i completely agree with that um and it's the same for us, yeah. And, and I think the biggest thing, you know, that we've really spoken about is, is the observation around it because that forces you to kind of take a step back. It really forces you to, you know, to stop and think. And, and that's probably the, the biggest thing because that, that helps you with, you know, your own self-awareness, but awareness of, of people around you too. And from then, you know, you can you can have the conversations, um, you know, maybe get a gauge and, um, you know, maybe then you know to go and ask a mate, you know, um, you know and ask and ask again um, and try to get him. But, um, yeah, I think there's definitely loads of work to be done but it's encouraging you know that certainly 
um, you know, the resources available to men um, and being talked about it are, um, yeah, have, have climbed loads in the last five years. Thank you so much for watching another episode of The Rest is Rugby. And thank you to Martin from Men Matter Scotland and Kyle Stain, our skipper, for coming on the show today. If you or anybody else you know is looking for mental health support, we have linked some resources in the description below. Thanks again for watching. See you again soon. Cheers. Cheers.